Maar zo ik een tisje boven. Hij is een vest, hè? Laten we hopen dat we de boel heeft de vest in de mol. De schuur kan. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I know you've been here now over an hour, and uh, it makes it a little bit difficult for me to tell you my story. So we'll shorten it and somehow. However, at the end of my talk, um, I will be here, and if the, the room is available, I will be more than glad to answer questions. Some of the questions are very important and they have to be answered. So without further ado, here I go. What I'm here to tell you this afternoon is how a little boy survived the war. As simple as that. It's not as simple as that. Uh, it is about myself, how I survived the Holocaust. Obviously, because of the time, uh, I will cut short in some places, but hopefully that you will get the, the gist of it. My name you heard, Label Zisman. I do come from Coven. I was born in Coven in Lite. Um, I was born in a, in a Hasidic family. It's important for you to know that. It's also important for me. Uh, my father, Oliver Shalom, was very close to the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, some of you know, some of you probably heard, he, he passed he, his uh, passed uh, 1950, Yud Shvat, Tov Yud. And we go back a uh, seven generations Chabad. So uh, really, for me, it's not difficult to tell you how and why I, I stood orthodox, I stood, I believe in God, believing in, in Rabbein Shalom, and believing in in Sadiqim. But one thing is believing, another thing is experiencing it. One thing is I believe, I have a Muna, I have Betochen, but something if you see has Gokhapotius, not one time, not two times, not three times, but so on, so throughout, uh, it's, it takes a different dimensions. And this is what I'd like to share it with you. So I hope you, you know, you'll have the, the indulgence. I know we are fasting today, so it makes it a little bit different. Um, in 1940, in 1940, 3940, where the, the war just broke out, the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe was in Warsaw. And over there, uh, a lot of the entire Jewish population in the world and uh, a lot of big uh, community leaders try to do, try to see how can we get out the Lubavitcher Rebbe out of Warsaw, which was at that time, it was the war bombing and so on. So there was money put in, in uh, I don't want to go into that very in, in, at length, but just, just I want to tell you that he was um, saved by a German officer who was uh, put away money in Switzerland. Anyway, this, uh, he was got to Berlin, and from Berlin, he went straight to Riga, which is the capital of Latvia. Lit Latvia was at that time yet neutral. 
My father, who I said was a Lubavitz or Chassid, Chabad, um, he heard that the Rebbe is in Riga. He got his passport with a visa, and he decided to go see him. He also took me along. And we, we now, we came to Riga. My father was able to have an audience with a rabbi, Yechidus. And it was late at night, must have been about 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. And at that time, I was just about, not even 10 years old, but in, in my memory, I see it like yesterday. We went into the Rebbe, and I was too young to appreciate, to understand the, all, all what's, what's happening, but my father broke out crying to the Rebbe with tears, which I hardly ever saw him that, except on the holidays, young Davlin. 